What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be showing off one of my favorite decks in standard format today. This is Baby Blacephalon, or as uh, it has been called on my stream, Blacephalon. Jeff Chris made this deck a thing at the Knoxville Regional Championships with a top 16 finish. The deck utilizes Baby Blacephalon to launch huge Fireball Circus attacks and then Pidgey Odo's airmail to draw cards throughout the course of the game. Jirachi using Stellar Wish to help get valuable resources like Fiery Flint, Welder, Fire Crystal into your hand so that you can amass a huge hand and take big pointed knockouts with Fireball Circus. This list is very close to Jeff Chris's original list from Knoxville. And this is the list I've been playing on stream, twitch.tv slash Tricky Jim. Make sure to give the channel a follow on Twitch so you can keep up with all of my gameplay action live every weekday. This list took the four custom catchers that were in Jeff Chris's original list, replaced two of them with great catchers, added a fourth Jirachi, and a 15th Fire Energy. There was also a version of this deck that did well at the Latin American International Championships. Manuel did uh, did finish ninth place. I'm just looking on uh, Limitless TCG right now. Shout out to the guys at Limitless for doing an amazing job recording the results of tournaments. Uh, Manuel Jorok finished ninth place with a version of this deck that plays Clefairy Doll, which I think is really interesting as well. Lily's Clefairy Doll is an option if you feel like you need more time setting up your Blacephalon. So just to show off that card uh, a little bit, Lily's, I'm calling it Clefairy Doll. It's a Lily's Polka Doll. You play Lily's Polka Doll, Polka Doll and you could just sit behind it while you set up. He put in three of these, still played the two great catchers, took out a uh, fire, played three Jirachi, and did not play the Heat Trance. So this is Manuel Jorok's top 16 list from the Latin American International Championships, just with the Lily's Polka Dolls in. I personally do prefer, I think, the uh, the other list as well with the Heatran, just giving us a little more options. And then with 15 Fire Energy, Victini Prism Star really does have some potential to be able to uh, be able to take big one-hit knockouts on uh, on tag team Pokemon and things like that. So we're gonna be playing some games with the. Blagephalon deck and seeing how we do. I think that this deck is really well poised in standard format right now. It does great against decks like Arceus Diagopalkia. It can also keep up with Turbo Reshizard, which has kind of asserted itself as one of the top decks in the format. It struggles with Malamar, and I think that Malamar is probably at an all-time low right now as far as the frequency with which it's being played because Malamar did not do too well the Latin American International Championship. So I think a deck like this could just very well be a strong play for going to locals or just playing on the ladder for the next few weeks, maybe until some Malamar hype picks back up because this deck does struggle with Malamar. It also struggles with Pidgeotto control decks. Uh, we can you know, have some sort of strategy against Pidgeotto Control, but it can struggle with that. If they're able to track, trap something active, I mean, we can refill our deck with Fire Energies using Victini, which is pretty cool. Uh, can also struggle against Doll Stall decks, and it looks like I am potentially playing against a Pidgeotto Control deck, so this could get a little bit worrisome. However, I do have a pretty strong start, so that's fine. I'm just gonna go in and get my Pidgeottos all set up so that I can start drawing cards next turn. And this is what this deck just wants to do. Pidgeotto's Airmail is amazing for drawing into resources turn after turn. I'm probably going to just attach this energy and that way I could potentially welder into you know a Heatran or something like that. Uh, Heatran I think is gonna be my ideal attacker early on in this matchup because I don't have to discard energy in order to use the attack. So that's really important. And we're gonna try and just outspeed this deck. If this is a Pidgeotto control deck, which I suspect that it is. We see their fan clubbing for some Pidgeys as well. And it's gonna be off to the races to see if I can outspeed them and start attacking quickly before they can get to the bottom of their deck and just start resource managing uh, really disruptive cards turn after turn. We see that they put a water energy 
on their Pidgeys so that if this Pidgey gets knocked out, they'll have a, a chance to retreat. So I do like that. We've got double Pidgeotto here and another Elms Lecture. I think that I do want to airmail a couple times to have some more options before I go in and maybe use Elms Lecture or Welder. I think ideally, you know, we would have drawn into Heatran. Okay. Um, we do have Heatran here, and I can retreat and fire crystal. So that's pretty good. And then I'll be able to welder two fires onto the Heatran. And if I draw into a final fire energy, then we're good to go. So I'm going to try and be aggressive here. See if I can't just run this Pidgeotto deck off the table with a turn two attack. This deck isn't built to get a turn two attack usually, but we got it. So that is amazing. Excellent stuff. I can get rid of this Blacephalon and the Pokegear. Four fire energy in the hand is excellent. And if we have any chance of beating this Pidgeotto deck, it's going to be with this strategy right here. So I do need to be careful. Uh, we see they play Water Energy, so Cold Crush is an option for them, for sure. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to worry about benching things yet. We just want to continue to airmail every single turn and put pressure on with our Heatran GX. 130 damage is perfect for knocking out Orangaroos too. So when they put Orangaroo into the active, they start using uh, resource management. I am going to be put pressure on by taking a knockout with Steaming Stomp every single turn. And eventually, if they do get a Articuno into play and use Cold Crush, I do have four Welders. I only have four Welders in the deck. I'm not playing Pal Pad right now. That is an option to consider if uh, if you're building this deck for yourself. I've seen some people, you know, when taking out the original Custom Catchers from Jeff Chris's list, it's like you have two spots to work with because you take out the four Custom Catchers, you put in two Great Catchers, and then, you know, the other two spots can really be just about anything. I do really love starting Jirachi, so I think a fourth Jirachi is pretty cool. But ultimately, if you start Jirachi enough, you don't really, you know, need four of them. I mean, so I think it's like a 10% increase or so between starting, you know, starting Jirachi when you're playing three and starting Jirachi when you're playing four. So you could very well just continue playing the three Jirachi. And as you can see, I am setting up just fine without the uh, Jirachi in the active anyway, and it's kind of a dead card now. Looks like my opponent is going in with the early Cold Crush, just acknowledging that I have gotten off to way quick of a start, and they're going to remove all of our energy, which is tough. Uh, I can Steaming Stomp again next turn. I have the Welder and the Fire Energies in my hand to do that, so that's fine. And I do wonder if they play Misty and Lorelei. That could be problematic if they do. And if they have the option to, uh, to cold crush over and over again, that could be very scary. So I hope that that's not the case, but we will certainly see. I think I want all of these energy in my hand. That feels good. And I do have one more airmail. We're setting up great. I need to save room for... See, Fiery Flint or Fire Crystal. Fire Crystal is probably better. I do have energy in the discard, so I like that. I do need to be saving room on my bench for the Victini Prism Star. I think that's going to be an important aspect of this matchup, too. Uh, I don't like that they have already forced my hand with a second welder. I mean, that is a lot of resources that they have kind of forced me to play through now. I think thinning the Ultra Space is good. We can get ourselves a Blacephalon out of the deck. Check the resources too to see. We've got two Welders left, five actual energy left, the Escape Boards. Saving the Escape Boards are going to be important for me also because I can put them on Pidgeotto's if my opponent tries to stall me out and use Steaming Stomp. Can't take a one-hit knockout with Hopper and GX when we're doing 150 damage, so we're going to go for the two-hit KO on this thing. And, you know, if they play Absol, which a lot of lists are playing Absol, uh, Absol makes it more difficult for my Jirachi to retreat. I wouldn't be able to retreat Jirachi for free. So I got to look out for Hammers. They're going to be trying to maybe use some Crushing Hammers 
to take this energy off of Heatran and then to gust up my Pidgeotto install it. So if I can hang on to the escape boards and just slap those down on Pidgeotto to get a free retreat, it'll guarantee have free retreat with an escape board because of the fact that Absol does not affect it. Absol only affects basic Pokemon. Pidgeotto is an evolution. So I'm liking my board state. A fourth Pidgeotto could be cool. Eventually, I will start to get uh, reset stamped as well, so I'm going to lose my hand, which the Fiery Flints are really good at thinning your hand out. It's a good way to discard cards. We can discard things like Jirachi that we don't want to see and just keep our deck filled with good stuff, which, uh, which is definitely ideal. My opponent is still just has a big chunk of deck left. I mean, 33 cards is pretty substantial. They've used Fan Club turn one and turn two, and we are putting on a ton of pressure. If we get this art knockout on an Articuno, which it looks like we are going to get, they cannot move it. So we're in the clear there. We've got Airmail again. Victini is good. I think we keep that just to have it in case I need to throw more energy back in. We can grab Heat Factory too. And at a certain point, I do need to kind of stop drawing cards because I can't, you know, put myself in danger of decking out. I think an extra fire energy here is fine. I don't want to get caught, uh, get caught slipping with, you know, a crushing hammer or something like that. So we're just going to steaming stomp for knockout. And I don't think that I need to play any of these cards from my hand. I kind of like them where they are. Uh, maybe I set up this fourth Pidgeotto now that I have my fourth Pidgey. I think that that's probably, probably reasonable. I like keeping three fire in the discard pile for now. Just make sure that my, uh, my fire crystals are always live cards. So if you're not familiar with Pidgeotto, what's going on right now? It might seem like, Andrew, what in the world are you playing against? Like your opponent is sitting there not doing anything. They've got Durangaroo, they've got Pidgeys, but I cannot see... Uh, what they plan on doing. The goal is for them to get to the bottom of their deck and just throw really difficult cards to deal with back into their deck so that they're drawing into those cards every single turn with Pidgeotto. Usually, you'll use cards like Belba and Bryson Man or Hapu, you know, Surge, Mars, to really escalate the draw uh, feature of this deck and we see that they are starting to finally do that right so they've surged they're going to use clay discard the top seven cards of your deck and they get to put all the item cards into their hand and now they have a ton of items in their hand because they were able to use clay so here come the crushing hammers things like that and it could be pretty difficult for me to launch an attack if they flip enough heads on these so we're hoping that they don't but with 23 cards left in the deck, like if they had double clay, they really would be able to, you know, see a ton of cards. It's 14 card dig for the items. We see that they got Mars instead, so they're going to be sacking one of those cards out of my hand. All those cards kind of stunk anyway, so that's fine. And they're going to throw something back in with Palpat. So this is like, this is when things start getting interesting. They are... Uh, limiting my hand size, limiting my options, and starting to throw things back into the deck. The clay was insane. I mean, that is a new card out of Cosmic Eclipse that we're going to be seeing, I think, in a lot of these uh, stall decks. And you can see my opponent scooped it up. They kind of realized that I got to uh, maybe a more aggressive start, and uh, and we're not going to be able to play out of it. Going to roll another one, see what we get paired up against. Hopefully, we'll see a big tag team Pokemon GX. Looks like we're playing against Arceus, Dialga, Palkia. Playing against Kingdra90. I feel like I play against them on the ladder quite a bit. So we should be seeing a good game. Uh, love going first for sure with this deck. It's a big deal. This deck does have some weaknesses. One of the weaknesses is that it can get run off the table quickly. Uh, if you're playing against like a Mewtwo, a Mew tag team deck, they go first, get a turn one welder. They can just go turn two cross division and knock out three Pidgeys, and there's not really anything that your deck can do about it. Looks like they are playing the Ends Resolve version of RCS Dagopalkia, so they might be getting off to kind of an explosive start. This is exactly the hand that we want to see, though. Turn one, Professor Alms Lecture, we get to go get some Pidgeotto action going on, and then 
next turn we're just going to be drawing cards and uh, by turn three we'll be looking to accelerate some energy into play so we'll stellar wish here we get the other lecture I think that's ideal and then we go turn one lecture turn two lecture and the rest is uh, is history so I'm not going to bench this mm, I don't think I need the second Jirachi quite yet. Uh, I'll judge next turn as to whether or not we need that. After I draw, you know, Elms again, take a look at my Pidgeotto count. I think ideally we want like four Pidgeotto in play, one Jirachi, and then uh, an attacker. That just gives us the best, you know, outs to be able to draw out of reset stamp and just the strongest draw outs for finding you know fire crystals and welders and fire energy and stuff like that we don't actually play switch in the list so multiple jirachi isn't always that good for us since you don't have switches to be able to pivot between them we'll see if my opponent goes for the turn one reset stamp are they uncomfortable with my seven card hand they know i got a lecture in it either way got the jirachi with the skateboard already and they're going for turn one Cynthia, so no ends resolve, turn one altered creation dreams here. I talked to Pedro a little bit after uh, Pedro's top 16 finish with Arceus Dalgapalkia in, uh, at LAIC, and Pedro said that he was not impressed with the, um, with the ends resolve that he ended up playing in his list. So I think that... Uh, the consensus is that End Resolve is not super consistent for RCS Dalgapalkia. If you guys checked my list that I posted here to the YouTube channel, you can see that I was not running it either. With three Pidgeotos, my other Pidgey is prized, we can, uh, we can just probably put something else here. We're going to airmail first and see if we can't find, yep, Weld or Good, and Blacephalons. Chaotic Swell is a little bit of an issue for us because we can't use our Ultra Spaces to find Blacephalons, but it looks like we are chilling. We've got one right there, which is fantastic. And then we've got another one, so no worries. Uh, I have definitely seen this deck struggle to find Blacephalons. We've got 34 cards left in deck. It can happen if you are not drawing into them and your opponent plays Swell Down. But we've been, we've been very fortunate here with our draws so far. I think we're just going to manually attach and then pass. No real reason to switch into another Jirachi since, uh, like I said, there's only two escape boards in the deck, no switches, so that could actually just slow us down. Where next turn, I do have the Welder ready to go. I can just airmail three times, use Stellar Wish, see if we can't bring up that Arceus Dalgapalkia and knock it out. Now, the Cryogonal is a little scary. Frozen Lock is going to deal... 80 damage because of weakness and after they use altered creation gx stop me from playing item cards now granted it does only have 90 hit points so if i can just welder a couple of times or even just blazer this thing you know maybe we can blazer it for knockout but i need to knock out the rcs dog okay if i knock it out this turn we are chilling so we're gonna go in and see what we can do there's a fire crystal I need a Fiery Flint. Fire Flint is going to make this combo work for sure. And I do get to see a ton of cards. We get to go six cards deep. Uh, at this point, I have, like, no Fire Energy in the discard pile. So the crystals are not actually doing for us. Uh, I need to go, we go six cards deep here. And then I can go three more deep with the Welder. So we are going to Welder for two because committing to this Blacephalon, that's for sure. And then we get to go five more deep with the stellar wish we're not there yet i need to find a fiery flint and we did not get it that is really sad so we're just a little bit short here i feel like at this point we want to hmm we want to retreat into our other jirachi and dig for more cards because i'm going to need to set up multiple Blacephalon, and it is very tough that they are set to take multiple prizes on this Jirachi next turn. So that is not where we want to be. But we do need to draw more aggressively. So let's see. We're going to Stellar Wish again. 
We did not find what we were looking for. I don't think I'm going to get item locked this next turn. I think they're going to accelerate first and go from there. So we'll get this into our hands. I don't think I'm getting item locked, but sure, I will I'll search just to thin the deck. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's it. We could put the Ultra Space down just to kick the cat as well and see if that sticks and then pass. It's not worth hitting this thing for 150 damage. It's just really not. Then I lose my Blacephalon that I worked so hard to build up. There's only four Welder in the deck, like I said, so that is uh, that is important to make sure that when you're taking knockouts with this deck, that you're taking one-hit knockouts. Right? When you're doing damage, you have to be taking one-hit knockouts. That's pretty much just the way it is. So we're going to Whirlpool. This is obnoxious. All right, I think I do just sack this Jirachi over here. The Pidgeotos are way more important. I'll find another escape board eventually, and we'll just airmail a couple of times, and draw up enough cards to hopefully take this uh, this knockout because I'm going to be benching, I believe, this other Blacephalon. They're using Guzma and Hala, guaranteeing themselves another swell, uh, which is going to prevent me from using Ultra Space, but that's fine. And then maybe accelerate onto their other Arceus Dalgapalkia. This does give me an out to potentially win the game in two turns. I can just knock out this thing and then knock out this thing. And we're good to go. But the Cryogonal is the kind of X factor in this match. Am I going to uh, have an issue with that? Something cool, uh, if we were playing the, the, the doll version of this deck, something that we could have done is maybe promoted another doll there. So, or promoted a doll there, and then my opponent doesn't take any prizes. So that is a cool function of that ninth place list from Manual from the Latin American International Championships. So. We're going to airmail a couple times. We're definitely going to be weldering to this Blacephalon too, but we do need to hit some cards. So there's a fire energy there. I'm almost just there on finding fire energy alone, which is sick. Uh, airmail again. There's another fire energy lit, and then airmail again. Now I would love to just find the fiery flint because then I don't have to stress about you know can I afford to welder this turn. We want to be able to just do that and not worry. Like we definitely need to welder so that I can guaranteed take a knockout on a cryogonal if a cryogonal make its makes its way into the active position. And now that we have that valuable fiery flint, I can safely one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I can very safely use welder this turn, accelerate two fires onto the bench Blacephalon and our board state is looking good to clean up this game. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, I need six to do 300 damage. And it could get a little sketchy if they do item lock me this next turn. I might not have enough energy to be able to, like enough energy in deck to be able to do anything because I can't I and I can't use these fire crystals I'm like almost out of energy so we are gonna fireball circus I have to do one two three four five six and then I have one left that's fine if they do bring up cryogonal I have one in hand I only need to find one more off of my air mails in order to take a knockout through item lock now question is how many fire energy do I actually have in deck we got six here in play uh, I've got one there. It might just be one left in deck, right? Because six, and then there's six in the discard pile. That's 12, and then one here, 13. I believe there's at least 14. There's one in the deck, and I think there might be one in the prizes as well. So with one prize, that could make drawing into that other fire energy a little bit problematic. Now, if they don't item lock, I have game because we just bring this up and double fire crystal and that's it. But surely they know that. The real zinger would be if they reset stamp item lock. And if they are able to prevent me from knocking out the cryogonal, then we are in a, uh, in a very bad situation. So we'll see what they're looking for. I have no doubt that they are probably digging for their reset stamp 
and trying to stamp me to three, just in case I do have the double fire in my hand and I'm able to take care of the cryagonal. They definitely increase their odds of making me dead draw with a reset stamp. So here we go, reset stamp coming in. Are they going to throw up the RCS Dagopalkia and potentially give me game, or is this going to be Cryogonal City? I think it's Cryogonal time. No! They're boldly going in with the RCS Dagopalkia. Maybe they didn't have the water energy. That's huge. Okay. So I'm feeling very confident about my ability to find six energy. I mean, it's, it's not great. It'd be better if I had the escape board on this Jirachi, because then we would have an out to use that. But we might just be in with promoting the Bolcephalon. I guess we might as well promote the Jirachi, just in case. Um, and then I could always welder to it and retreat. If I need, or attach to it and retreat. I would feel real bad if that lost me the game, though. Um, because if I like needed the extra energy, like I had everything in my hand that I needed to take the knockout, but then I needed the extra energy. So I think, uh, I think we're good promoting here and we're just going to see what we get off of these airmails. All right. Airmail one, not useful. Let's see how many energy do I actually have in the discard ball? Nine, 10, 11. Close. I mean... This is more useful, I guess, than than the Great Catcher. I'm gonna go Airmail two. Fire energy again. So now, if I find a Fiery Flint off of this, we win. Fire Crystal, very close. I think we just need to Welder one to try and draw three more cards. And if I find Fire Crystal, we win. Yeah, there's no way to get enough energy into the discard pile to potentially use Victini. I would need six more energy. Not six. Andrew, you're horrible at math. Five. I need five more energy in the discard pile in order to pull that off. So we are hanging on by a thre thread here. All right, Welder. Ooh, drawing three more cards. And we got there. I think? No. I don't think I have the energy in my deck. We needed... I think it needed to be a crystal instead. So let's take a look. Pretty sure we're short. Yeah. Oh, don't scoot, bud. I ain't got it like that. I am at five. I am one energy short of game. And we see that energy is prized. Oh, the agony. Having to welder the energy. We didn't have the energy. I've got the fire crystal. We've got five. But I need six. That is, uh, that is that. There's no way around it. We can fireball circus for one, two, three, four, five. And they've got game with their attack. So some crushing, crushing losses. No. Ah, well played. Oh, my goodness. Really, really sad there. Very good reset stamp. Unfortunate game for Blajephalon. I do think that Blajephalon, uh, Baby Blacephalon, is one of my favorite decks in current standard format right now. Does have some weaknesses. Obviously, reset stamp can still be bad. Just setting up three Pidgeotto, sometimes you can't find those game-winning cards. I mean, we had everything we needed on that backup Blacephalon, but could not get the pieces together to knock out an RCS Dialgopalkia for a game there. So that was uh, that was pretty tough. Turns out 280 damage is pretty tough to deal. But I think this deck is strong. I think it's well poised. I think that uh, you do generally take positive matchups against tag team Pokemon, but it doesn't always work out for us. I think uh, a couple things could have gone our way, our way there if we were able to draw into a Fiery Flint early on. We would have had that quick knockout on the RCS Dagopalkia and just been able to end the game there, but we didn't find enough energy, so we were short there. And we were also short at the end of the game, um, just one energy, as we saw. So that was uh, that was very crushing. Now, I think that the Clefairy Doll version is interesting. Like I said, Manuel just caught, 
the 15th energy is not playing, a fourth Jirachi, and he's not playing Heatran, and you can put in three Clefairy dolls to uh, play Manuel's list. So I guess Lily's Clefairy doll. Poke, I keep calling it Clefairy doll. Clefairy doll is from the original base sets, uh, but this has got a new name, Lily's Poke doll. I think it's called Clefairy doll. If I'm wrong, you know what? I apologize. Anyways, that's it. Baby Blacephalon, still a good deck. Give it a spin if uh, if you're feeling compelled to. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for TCG singles as well as FullGripCodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, help us out with all the things that are good for an algorithm, and I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Peace.